Hey Altered fans, it's Dan with Main Deck, and I've got another Exalted digital gameplay video for you using the Exalted fan-made digital platform. Link is down in the description below. Now, Exalted 8.0 has finally released, and this introduces, among some other cool upgrades, support for a bunch of cards that have been revealed throughout Altered's Kickstarter campaign. So, in this video today, we're going to be playing an Axiom deck, but we're actually going to be using, instead of Sierra and Oddball, who's like the starter deck hero, we're going to be using Traced and Rossum. The thing I want to mention about this deck right away is that this card pool could be a lot kinder to Trace and Rossum. So really, this is like our best approximation at a Trace and Rossum deck, given the card pool that we have right now. I will go through it when we go through the deck list here, but um, I'll explain why I have these card choices in here and where this deck is going to get some improvement when we get the full card pool. But despite that, it is a very fun deck. I've been playing it a little bit, experimenting and tweaking the deck, and I'm super happy with how it plays. It is a super fun deck to play. So let's get into the deck list and then go through our three games today. What's up everyone, it's Dan with Main Deck, and as I mentioned in the intro, today we are going through an Axiom Traston Rossum deck. Now, the interesting thing about Traston Rossum is though we have their card, the card pool is really still Sierra and Oddball's card pool, so it's very focused on what Sierra and Oddball want to be doing, and Traston Rossum kind of are doing something very different. In fact, when I was designing this deck, I wanted to have absolutely no landmarks in it, because I think they work super well without even having to use landmarks, although landmarks work with them quite well too. Um, I just don't think the landmarks we have right now are really ideal for Trace and Rossum, and we do some very fun stuff without needing them. So, all that's to say, keep in mind that this deck list is definitely just kind of, we're pulling in any cards we can just to kind of make it functional, um, but the deck will be, I think, a lot different and a lot stronger as well once we get the full card pool. Um, there's going to be a lot more stuff that I think will really support the style of play. So let's go through the card effects, the uh, hero effect, and then the whole deck list will show you everything we're doing. So Trace and Rossum here um, have two effects. When a card leaves your reserve during the afternoon, if they have less than five scrap counters, he gains a scrap counter. Um, so leaving your reserve during the afternoon means playing it from your reserve. It also means using a support ability from your reserve. Um, and there are other things you can do to actually use as well. In fact, if your cards in your reserve get sabotaged, you'll also get a scrap counter as long as it happens during the afternoon, which is very nice. A nice little uh, kind of a little consolation prize for losing the card is that your opponent kind of speeds up your ability to get to the second ability. The second ability is if I have five or more scrap counters, I gain exhaust, draw a card, then put a card from your hand in reserve. So draw a card and put a card from your hand in reserve sounds like it's kind of a drawback um, in that, you know, you're, I mean, it's obviously an advantage because you get that extra card, but then you have to send a card to reserve. But what we're going to do in this deck is utilize cards that are especially effective out of the reserve making it so that we're really getting to draw a card and then put something into the reserve to play it for cheaper or play it stronger. Uh, and then we'll use all that advantage to, as we get towards the mid to end game, have a lot of cards and just dump a lot of powerful units to the board with that flexibility to play them right out of reserve to get their strongest forms. So um, I, I'm, we'll go through the rares first. The rares as, are just super interesting in this deck because all five are out of faction rares. Run zero Axiom rares in this deck. All five are out of faction. And these are all going to make sense with everything I was just talking about with Trace and Rossum. We have Daughter of Yggdrasil in Axiom, who is the base version of Daughter of Yggdrasil, 5-5-3 five, five, three for 3 with when played from hand, target opponent draws a card. So obviously we want to put that into our reserve so that we are able to play it without giving the opponent that extra card. Um, Haven Bouncer. Wow, this always feels so strong in this deck. Uh, Haven Bouncer actually is a 2-2-2 normally for 3 again. When played from hand, Sabotage, which is nice. Sometimes you just want to have that Sabotage axis. But when played from reserve, she gains 2 boosts, so she's a 4-4-4 out of reserve. Um, just that flexibility, the ability to do either one, and playing a 4-4-4 for 3 in general is just pretty potent. Um, so she's awesome. Really like Haven Bouncer. Lyra Chronicler, another three drop in here, a 404. Once again, I mean, this is a trend in here, this sort of three cost for four power, daughter being in this case three cost for five power as long as it's on the right uh, spots on the map. But 404 is still nice and has support resupply. So you can actually use this early in the game as well to play her for three on like turn one, turn two, then you can remove her to resupply a card and that'll put a counter on Trace and Rossum. And then you'll have a new card in your resupply, uh, in your in your reserve that you can then play 
to give Trace and Rossum another counter. Um, our goal, some of these card choices are really here just to try and churn through those counters as fast as possible, which is why, which is then how we get this ability enabled as soon as possible. Um, we have sticky note seals. This was, uh, after some testing, an inclusion that I felt needed to be in here because when you play against Ortis, you need to have an answer for for the uh, for the high cost five cost uh, landmarks that they play and sticky note seals deals with that it also deals with very very powerful characters in the late game and it has fleeting but it's okay because you can just put it right into your reserve if you want to that's a little dicey because you're gonna let your opponent know that it's coming um, they may be able to sabotage it or something but it's an option it's an option that's there and our final Rare is Izmir Stargazer, which I think is a rare that not a lot of people have played so far. And I think this will be kind of fun to show actually what I think is a, a reasonable home for this card, at least right now with what we have, because Izmir Stargazer is a 1-1, one, 1-2-1 one, 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 with no abilities. But the fact that it is a one drop is what we really like here. It allows us to turn one, play this out with another, uh, another character of some kind to the board put them both in reserve, then turn two, you can play them both out of reserve again to get two counters on Trace and Rossum. Your goal in this deck is kind of just to keep pace a little bit with your opponent in that early game and then overwhelm them later. So we're not trying to go, this isn't a Bravos deck. We're not trying to go like I'm taking both sides from turn one. Um, you're, you're just trying to keep pace. You're trying to not lose too much ground and then overwhelm them in the late game. So here are our commons in here. Amelia Earhart. I love this card in this deck. I love her so much. She's awesome. She is a three cost two, two, two. You never want to play her from hand though. You want to put her into your reserve using Trace and Rossum or another effect that we'll look at shortly or a resupply um, and then play her as a two, two, two for one. That's the kind of value you're looking for. And because of Trace and Rossum drawing extra cards and tossing things to reserve, it is, you're a lot more uh, able to sort of flood the board with these effects where you're not really like losing too much by playing a bunch of low cost things in here. Axiom Salvager, honestly, I've been a little less impressed with this card than I'd like to be, but he's he's what we work with right now. Um, he's a one a one two one 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 with when played from reserve resupply. It's just that two cost out of reserve for the one 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 is it's just not great. But that sort of like turn two play again is okay just to um, just to play him out of the reserve. Get the counter on Trace and Rossum, then resupply a new option in there. It might be like an Amelia Earhart or something. Play that. You know, you can get a lot of counters quickly if you're hitting things with the Salvager. So he's okay. Axiom Scrambler. Again, this card is a little too expensive for what I want this deck to be doing, but our card choices are limited. It was like this or another landmark that I don't care about. Um, I tried playing landmarks in this deck for a while, and I just felt like we, we lost too much ground in the early game playing those and it was too late in the game to play those once we had Trace and Rossum online. Um, so landmarks just never felt like they quite hit here. So we're just playing this instead. Give us a sabotage option. Cost four is a two, four, two. The stats leave a lot to be desired for a four cost. I'd, four is just, the four is only in mountain and that's just kind of, that's a little tough to, to play with. But okay, Brassburg Hive is in here because I didn't know what else to put in. I ran out of cards. They was all landmarks. Basically, I just plan, I intend to mana orb this every single time. <laughs> just don't. Um, maybe there's a late game play where like this makes sense, but I kind of doubt it. I'm going to usually just mana orb this thing. Foundry Armor. Now, this is a card I love. Now, the rare version of this changes its ability from when played from reserve to when played from anywhere. And I do think that's a reasonable option with a, with a wider card pool, but it works perfectly fine here in common because we are going to be just stuffing it into our reserve as much as possible so that we can play it out of there as a three cost flexible 444. It can be a 222 in two expeditions or a 444 in one. Um, great card though. Again, just one of these, another uh, three cost 444, three cost 444. Uh, Jan Assembly Overseer at Common is really just here as a two cost, two cost unit with some stats. Uh, the three forest is actually pretty nice for two, but he's not impressive otherwise. The zero in water is, it kind of bites you sometimes. Um, he's just there because he costs two, and and he's a card that isn't a landmark. Keylon Burst is always, a, a, you know, often a solid piece of, of removal. Depends a little bit on the deck, but you usually will find decent targets for this. I do prefer sticky note seals, but again, you know, it's just, this gives us, we kind of have both options. We can hit four or less or four or greater. Um, and we are able to hit a lot of, you know, a wide range of threats and you can sort of tweak based on the matchup, which ones you're holding on to because of that. And then our last common is Keylon Elemental and Keylon Elemental was, is probably the card that I feel like has overperformed for me the most. 
Um, it's a card where I immediately thought, you know, like, well, I'll put it in because when I play it from reserve, it's it doesn't have the the drawback uh, on hand to put a card from your hand into reserve. The rare version makes it you may put a card from your hand in reserve. But what I found is that when I play this thing, I want to put a card from my hand in reserve every single time. It's a it's a wonderful turn one play. Turn one, Keylon Elemental dropping something like an Izmir Stargazer into the reserve allows you to immediately play that Stargazer out or Amelia Earhart, another good option. Immediately play it out in order to put some stuff on the board that can allow you to actually double progress turn one and get a counter on Traston Rossum. Um, Keylon Elemental just gives us a little bit extra on this ability to kind of put things like Daughter, Haven Bouncer, Amelia Earhart, uh, Foundry Armor into our reserves so that we're able to get that max value from them. Um, it's it's That's kind of the idea of the deck. That's what we want to do. It is a ton of fun to play. Again, it'll get a lot stronger, I think, with the card pool, but I have really enjoyed playing this deck, even if I haven't won quite every game with it. So with that all looked at, let's go ahead and jump into our games and see how it performs tonight. All right, our first opponent for the night is an Axiom opponent. So we do have a mirror match, but they are playing Sierra and Oddball. So this will be interesting. We can definitely Mana Orb the Brass Bug Hive right away. Um, we have a lot of three drops. A lot of three drops. The Scrambler is a little too expensive. Um, I think I'd like to keep this Jan, maybe. We're, we're a ways off from activating Daughter without giving them too much advantage. So we're going to toss that. And we're going to keep Jan as a, just a, a cost option and then Foundry Armor here. We're on the... We play, unfortunately. So we're going to... We're playing first. We just have to play this to one of these sides, I guess. All we can really do is play a three drop right now because we didn't get any of our one drops. They'll play a Frog Prince over there and we will both progress once for turn one. I want to see an Izmir Stargazer. That would be perfect. This would be a perfect turn for showing that card. Nope, just two Foundry Armors. Okay, well that's... I mean, that's a great card, but I think I'll be okay just having two of them this game. But yeah, these costs are just not working out. This is a, this is the consequence, really, of the card pool being just kind of as awkward as it is. Uh, reprocessor. Is that we have we have a lot of just three drops, and they our hands just kind of clog up a little bit sometimes. Um, in a way that isn't super, super great. Um, okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and we'll put the armor down here and uh, we'll try and get moving on the companion expedition as well. And then get our counter on to Trace and Rossum. I want to answer their Axiom Reprocessor, but I need to be able to put something on the board when I do that as well. Keylon Elemental. Okay. See, now we're now we're talking a little bit. Now we're talking. Keylon Elemental and Sticky Note Seals is probably a nice turn. Hmm. Daughter is so good, but Foundry Armor is so flexible. But maybe in, in against Axiom, I'd rather have the extra stats on one zone from Daughter, I think. Or, no, I just put Jan in. We just put Jan in now. We can keep both of these and use them both at some point. I think that makes more sense. So they got a oh, they got a cheap Amelia too. Wow, I'm so jealous over here. Um, okay, we will let's see. Keylon Elemental will be really good over here. Stats are perfect there. And then we'll go ahead and pop in. I guess we'll pop in the daughter. We'll see what happens to that daughter. I'm afraid of a sabotage. They certainly can have sat. Oh, wow, the Brass Bug Hive. Oh, no. Okay, that's okay. We have the sticky note seals. They're going to get their reprocessor, but wow, yeah, that has to go right now. We can't let that exist anymore. Definitely going to sticky note seals that. But they're going to block us off and move on that side. So it, the, the good news is it's been even so far, but we really need to be moving up on our counters. And they have a reprocessor in play, which isn't isn't the greatest. Sierra is still quite good. Now we have a sticky note seals. Okay, so daughter sticky note seals is a nice turn. Yeah, we'll we'll tuck Amelia here. Daughter sticky note is a pretty. It's yeah, we need it again because we it's another brass bug hive. 
Holy cow. Okay. Uh, well, that's fine. So... It doesn't matter which side we go to, but I would rather... Yeah, well, it does. It does, because I don't want to move... My Keelan Elemental becomes a lot worse if we progress on this side to Forest. So Keelan Elemental will be at its max power for next turn if we go there. And then Sticky Note Seals. That thing again. Get out of here. Stop having those. I don't like it. Okay, keeping pace. We're keeping pace. That's the goal. Stargazer. Stargazer, Stargazer. These are some of our strongest units, but... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Uh... We're gonna we're gonna keep the armor. Oh, that was wrong. Maybe I could have just given them a card, but they have they just they have so many cards. But I guess so. If they have so many, maybe that extra card wouldn't have mattered as much. I'm not sure. Another reprocessor if they want it. Um, okay, we'll play our Keylon Elemental over to this side. The Stargazer will. Make it a lot easier to get Trace and Rossum online next turn. And this lets me play out my whole hand. Um, well, I can play out my whole hand anyway, but it's just that card. I was just worried about that card. But maybe I shouldn't have worried about it as much. This reprocessor sure is a lot of value for them, though. I just haven't had, uh, haven't found a Keylon Surge to get rid of it. And my Sticky Note Seals had more important targets. So, Mountain will let us progress on that side. I don't know. I'm going to push this over here. I want to tr try and progress this turn if possible. We can take one side and they take the other. That's fine with me. But they have a Foundry Armor, so... And no end of other useful cards. Frog Prince... Certainly gives them good forest. Five, six, seven. I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm just gonna play everything out here. I think we're just gonna try and push one side this turn. They play the second. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're gonna get a lot of free cards. What can you do though? They still progress as well, unfortunately. But. This turn, we should be a bit stronger. It's going to be tight, though. This is going to be a tight game. For... Uh, I could really use both of those stats. I guess we'll put the Stargazer in, because I just feel like Jan's stats are maybe a little more useful. Another Brass Bug Hive, and a, oh, three little pigs. Okay, it's just a common one, at least. At least it's just the common. They're only a little bit ahead of us this time, though. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and contest them over here. Okay. They're going to play a Brass Bug Hive, and they're going to get a Brass Bug, fresh from the Hive. Okay. We're going to put the Stargazer... Stargazer doesn't help us very much on that side. We're going to put the Stargazer over here, which will turn on Trace and Rossum. So we're finally activated. It was... A bit late, a bit later than I like to with the deck, but that's okay. Put the armor over there. Yeah, a lot of power over there. Okay, that's fine now. So now we're going to activate Trace to draw some. Find a Keylon Burst. Find a Keylon Burst, huh? It's kind of cool. So we'll put the Keylon Burst down here. Um, interesting. 
Well, I don't think we have time to burst the hive. So we are just going to... The three little pigs is fleeting anyway. So let's just burst the three little pigs. And that will discard them. And let us win on that side. Completely. Okay, now this is the turn. This is where we have to pop off, basically. Sticky note seals, which I kind of... Doubt this is going to be very useful based on all of the characters we've seen them play. All of their characters are pretty low cost. They just have big landmarks and they're not really going to be playing those. So, um, will this help at all? I don't think it will. Um, I don't think it'll actually help. So we're going to mana orb this. What I want to see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess it wouldn't have mattered either way, but I want to see Trace and Rossum hit one of my really sweet three drops. But I think we're just we were just a turn too late to generate all the advantage that we really need to get anywhere. Ah, Amelia Earhart. Yeah, like I think I would have had Sticky Note Seals active, but I just don't. I really don't think it would have had any good targets anyway. So. You know, so what good does that do? Can we block them off here? Ooh, wrong stat for Lyra Chronicler, unfortunately. That's going to be pretty tough to do. They have infinite cards, so I doubt we're blocking them off significantly at all. Yeah, three little pigs. Way too big. I guess I could have put Chronicler in and resupplied something, but I don't I don't know. I guess maybe I like a Keylon search could have been found. Um There's no way to go to sudden death or anything, right? Six, three, yeah, no, their stats are just too big over there. I'm sure they have more stuff too. But shoot, that was that was close. That was a pretty close game, all things considered. Again, just like a clunky opener, I felt like. And if it were just a little smoother, we could have had Trace and Rossum online one turn sooner. Then I think we would have been okay. So, good game, guest. Axiom opponent. Good game. All right, opponent number two, and it is a Bravos opponent. Ooh, that's kind of scary. Bravos goes really fast. That might be a problem for us, but let's see how we do here. Brassbug Hive, easy toss. We don't need that. Um, oh, we can have a flexible start here. Okay, okay. I kind of like this. This is all right. We're going to do the Scrambler, and we don't want to give Bravos extra cards at all. So we're going to toss this right now. We'll find a daughter later, I'm sure. Um, this gives us a nice bit of flexibility. Now they are playing Kojo and they are going first. So they're going to get a companion Buddha and we're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. Probably ignore it. Honestly, <laughs> probably ignore it. All right. Their turn begins and they have their Buddha. They have to make the first play, which I'm always pretty happy about. We can respond depending on where they go. I don't think they'll be able to shut us out of getting one of these sides. Obviously, they are likely to play to the hero side here. Okay. Ooh, Ratatoskr to the hero side. Okay, interesting. Um, how flexible do we need to be then? We can... I mean, yeah, I think, I think we'll just be flexible. We'll put the Stargazer over here. We'll match the Ratatoskr and we'll see where we can push them to go now. Unless they don't have... If they don't have another 2-drop, then we're actually in really, really good position. We'll be able to progress twice this turn if that's the case. But they probably do. They probably do. They got to set up their hand, right? That's the thing in, in Altered. You get to determine very much what your first turn looks like. Oh, a physical training. Okay, physical training on the Ratatoskr. Wow. Wow. Okay. Huh. That's a pretty strong play, actually. A two for three, effectively. 
Well, that is a good start for them then, actually. That's a very good start for them, because Jian cannot totally stop Buddha. Jian's just going to come down. We'll allow us to progress once, but they're going to be off to a fast start. Okay. And they pass. Our opponent is unfortunately taking a, a very long time on a lot of these plays, but I'm cutting it all out for all of you guys, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you know, people are, people are new to the game and everything. So stuff, it's, it's no big deal. Not too worried about it. Uh, Brassburg Hive. Don't care about that card at all. Tossing it away. Keylon Burst is actually looking very good here though. Keylon Burst will probably give us a really nice play against a turn when they try and physical training one of these lower drop cards. So I think we're going to really like having Keylon Burst. I think I'm looking at, I'm looking at Stargazer Chronicler this turn. Which will give us a pretty good amount of flexibility and get start getting our counters moving on a Trace and Rossum. It's not the fastest that they can get moving, but it's fast enough. Alrighty, so we're going to start, and uh, since we are on Mountain over here, let's go ahead and drop the Stargazer on this side. And keep our options open. Get our first counter on Trace and Rossum. Okay, and a Bravos Tracer on that side, huh? Well, that's interesting. What do I want to do about that? I could still, I could play Chronicler. I could play Chronicler to that side. Do I think they have a one or a two drop left? With their last card in hand. I don't think I want a Keylon Burst right now. We're going to try it. We're going to see, we're going to see if they've got it. If they've got it, at least we can force them to commit it here and still, you know, win on this side or whatever. They could have a second Tracer, though. Like, But then, yeah, I mean, if they get rid of both their Tracers right away, they're going to be so low on cards, then I think we're actually going to be in a really good spot, especially with this Keylon Burst in hand. Nothing. All right. We will take that, then. Double progression on the hero side, but that is okay with me. We have the Chronicler down here now, which I'm quite happy about. Okay, and let's see. Ooh, Keylon Elemental into Airheart. That's kind of nice too, but I don't... We have to hold on to the Keylon Burst, so we can't really make that happen. Um, We'll lose Amelia. I think that's okay. The Keylon Elemental might be really nice later. I think we're going to resupply the Chronicler and hope to get something cool. I'd love to see them. I've seen this happen before. I'd love to see them physical trading the Buddha. That is the that is a very easy Keylon Burst target. But we actually have the potential this turn to gain up to three scrap counters on Trace and Rossum if we resupply a three or lower, which is pretty likely. There's only two hits, I think, in the deck, right? That the Sabotager and the Brass Bug Hive, which we've seen, we've seen two of the Brass Bug Hives so far. So, ooh, that's not the card we wanted to see, though. Um, because we have not seen Sticky Note Seals yet. So, let's try and get Sticky Note Seals. We are going to use the support ability on Chronicler. Come on, Sticky Note Seals. We saw Jian. All right. Well, Jian is fine, too. Um, so, we can still progress on... We can still progress on this side, yeah, and, and we can totally shut them out on that side. Yeah, that, that sounds good to me. Perfect. Let's do that. Jan and Jan will be our play. And the second Jan, and we are down to just one token, one counter needed on Trace and Rossum, and we have the Keylon Elemental to set it up as well. So this will be really nice. Evenly matched against Bravo so far. Okay. Keylon Elemental, Keylon, I don't need two Keylon Elementals. But we got Keylon Elemental into Salvager into potentially one more play, so that's pretty cool, actually. They got rid of the Atlas. Really? I mean, that makes sense, I, I guess. The Atlas is, it's a few more turns before it gets good. But that really makes me want to be quite careful here. Because I want to keep Burst open as long as possible. If I see them going for Ratatosk or Physical Training, I want to be able to Burst it. So I don't know when that's going to happen. 
Like, an option is actually to play the Axiom Salvager. But... I think we're going to Keyline Elemental it. I think that's fine. Uh, Keyline Elemental needs to be over here to really do anything. Put the Salvager in the reserve. If they play Ratatoska, I'm just not going to know what I should do. I mean, I won't have an option, really. I, the option is to Keyline Burst it, or to just play as if it's not about to become a... What is it? 777? <laughs> It's really big. A really big squirrel. Okay, a tracer. Ah, it's the rare tracers. Yeah, I mean, like, I thought this was the starter deck, so confirmed that this is the starter deck. So it's not like this is the, you know, greatest test in the world of this deck. Um, okay. Well, that's fine. Let's go ahead and do this, the salvager over to here then, I guess. They might end up just winning on that side this turn. If they do, that's okay. We got a resupply, we got a Haven Bouncer. That'll be good next turn, but it's not quite the turn for it. But we now can activate Trace and Rossum. They're going for the physical training on the Tracer. Wow, okay. All right then. Sure, I, I mean, I don't mind letting them have it at this turn. That's totally fine. We're just gonna get our value. Yeah, perfect. We're just gonna get our value from Trace and Rossum. Pass away. I mean, I wanted to kill on burst, whatever they physical training, but they might do it again another time. But if they want to try that hard to get that side, fine by me. All right. Um, so at this point, we are just happy to have huge value characters in our reserve and a kill on boost or a kill on burst in hand. Be nice to find a sticky note seals just to have this secured, but I think we'll be able to outpower them now. They're stuck on water here, too. So it's they're on mono forest, mono water. And that could play into things. There's Amelia. Beautiful. Okay. I think... I think we're okay losing daughter. I really want to keep the Keylon Burst. I think the Keylon Burst is going to be good. They, get, they do get Buddha this turn. But our plays are pretty big. Okay, they're gonna play nice. A Haven trainee is not. The, I mean, it's it's got three in the forest stat, so I guess that's what they want it to be. But uh, another Amelia. Wow, it's a lot of Amelias. Okay. Um. Yeah, we'll just play Amelia over here and kind of match the Buddha, I think. And that's this is our advantage. So like, Trace and Rossum. Not really a deck for the faint of heart in some way, because this first chunk of the game, you don't have any advantage. You're just kind of relying on the synergy of your main deck cards exclusively. But you get to this latter half of the game, and that is where you start to just churn out value. So they have that, and they have a Ratatosk or two, which is, I mean, that's a lot of stats. That is an awful lot of stats. And I can't, I can't really beat them at both unless I Keylon Surge something. I guess that's no. Can't really beat them at both. And we're both on. If we only weren't both on Forest there. Uh, okay, that's fine. So let's just crush them over here. And they. They play Ratatosker to that side. Yeah, I mean, I guess either way. I suppose. But now I don't have to play my Foundry Armor anywhere. Right? There's absolutely no point to doing that. Any point to Keylon Bursting anything? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. No, I don't think I need to Keylon Burst anything. I mean, I could have played Amelia Earhart just to get her in there, but I'm going to be able to Tucker, maybe I should have. Maybe I should have played Amelia Earhart just so she would go to reserve. That wouldn't have been terrible either. We're hoping to shut them out this turn, though. Sticky note. Found sticky note. Oh, the bouncer is really good now, too. Good turn to be going first. Holy cow. Okay. Um, this is maybe dangerous. This might be dangerous. We're going to get rid of the sticky note. 
I really want to have Amelia too. And we're hoping, we're just hoping they don't see Atlas physical training. If it's just Atlas, Atlas and like Bravos Pathfinder, we should be able to outstat it. And if it's anything small, we have Keylon Burst and Amelia and Haven Bouncer. Okay, we're going to start with Trace and Rossum as always. We drew a new sticky note seals. Wow, nice. We are set. We have everything we need. Perfect. Uh, and we're going to start by dropping this Haven Bouncer, and we will try and defend against the dual element spot and get rid of this trainee. They did not mana orb anything. So I wonder what they have to play. They they do have enough to go Atlas, Atlas and training, but we're going to, there's the Atlas. Okay. Okay. Well, it's just difficult to predict, predict exactly where they're going to go with this. I, I think what we're going to do is put the Amelia down. We're going to put it down on this side. Because I want them to commit the Bravos Pathfinder there as well. Feel like they need to. They went for the training. Oh, I was. That was unfortunately for them the wrong play. I was so worried that they were going to put the Pathfinder down because the Pathfinder on the companion side would have meant that they won. But the sticky note seals destroys them here. Wow. Okay. Whew, that was lucky. That was honestly so lucky that they went for the physical training instead when Pathfinder would have won them the game. Okay. Moving on to the final day. It is evenly matched. But we have a resource advantage. But they have Buddha this turn. Ugh, Buddha. And we got rid of one of our other sticky note seals, so they can they can certainly Atlas physical training again. And we just have to try and tie it. We can't let them win on both sides. Okay, they got rid of the Atlas. Nice. That was actually what we wanted to see. We're going to have a mana advantage and a card advantage going into this turn. Will it be enough is the question. But we have two three costs that put four four stats on the board, four, four, four stats on the board. So that's pretty good. That's like a Shenlong, a Shenlong worth of stats. And then we'll be able to key on burst as well. And we'll have access to seeing a few more things. So it's not the worst position in the world. Uh, Salvager. I just don't see myself really caring about Salvager this turn, given everything else going on. So I think the strategy is just going to be to stack high on one side. We can stack our eight stats and have a Keylon burst up as interaction. If we win one and they win the other, we go to sudden death. And we when we go to the arena, then it's a turn when they don't have Buddha. Uh, whoops, hang on. I want to use Trace and Rossum. Brass Bug Hive. Well, that's a mana orb next turn. All right, Haven Bouncer. If they physical training either of them, though, that's uh, actually pretty good for us. And I think they're going to have to. Their other card in hand is a... They could have another Atlas, I guess. If they have another Atlas, that's pretty good for them. We can still win on... We can still win by bursting the Pathfinder, though. Win on that side and then go to, go to the tiebreaker. They went for the physical training. You do love to see it. They're just going to go for the physical training. In that case, we're going to move ahead and Keylon burst it right now. They could have another physical training, I guess. But I mean, I doubt they would put it all on Buddha. I mean, maybe they would. You know, it's funny, though, if they have Haven Bouncer, they can win. Haven Bouncer would actually be the thing that would shut us out. If they Haven Bouncer and sabotage this. Okay, they're playing Monkey on that side. Monkey on that side is fine. Uh, just thinking this through. Monkey on that side is super fine. Monkey on that side means we win. 
Monkey on that side wins us the game. Beautiful, beautiful. They actually needed to fight the Haven Bouncer side. Well, even if they, if all they had was Monkey, they weren't fighting it either. All right, that's it. Nice, we got there. Good game, Gregoire, Bravos opponent. This, see this deck, the card pool, not super kind to it. Where we still struggle against that Bravo starter deck, but uh, it's a fun game. Okay, and our third and final opponent for the night is against Nevenka Account 2, playing Lyra, of course, as their name says. This should be an interesting game. I think in a lot of our games uh, on the channel so far against Lyra, they have uh, they have whiffed on a roll at some point, so we'll see. Brassbug Hive into mana is an easy choice. A lot of threes, Sticky Note Seals. Very good against Ismodius, if that's, if that's what we're going to see here. Um, I don't mind Chronicler to start. I think, I think we're going to put this away because I don't know that we're going to see Asmodeus. And we can maybe find another one later. And we'll put away the daughter. Because it's going to be a little bit till we build up to that. This gives us two nice options. Hathor can get buffed to be 4 4 one. Yeah, let's, I mean, let's see, I guess. We'll put the Salvager down. And they have to roll on Nevenka, and yep, they got the boost. Okay. Um, so we'll just take the progression over here, because it's not like we can stop them anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Um, and it's all going to a random spot right now anyway. Okay. Uh, all right, we'll put the Jan down here. This lets us play three characters this turn, two out of reserve, and then one from hand. So a lot of flexibility. Lyra's got a lot of zeros, so these small drops actually will help us keep the pace with them a little bit. If not, you know, it might be tough to totally block them off. I think we'll start with Stargazer from reserve over on this side, where its stats are. Yes, its stats are the same either way. Pop the Stargazer over there, though. A Trickster. Ooh. Nice. They they hit the 4+. plus. Um, a second Stargazer will beat them over there. So let's bring the Salvador over here and resupply something. A Keylon Burst. That'll be nice to have next time. Oh man, they're making me commit now. Doesn't matter which side we commit to, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if it matters too much, and these will be good either way, so we'll just pop this over here. No, I just... no, we just never... it doesn't matter. And they popped it over there, of course. Sounds good. One on either side. Keeping pace, keeping pace. Keeping pace and building up. That's what we like to do here. Keylon Burst, Stargazer. So we can't Keylon Burst Chronicler. Uh, I wish our two drops were a little spicier than they are, but ooh, you know, Keylon Elemental into Chronicler is kind of a nice. That's kind of cool. Although we progressed here last time, and this is where it would have been the best, but Keylon Elemental is still pretty good over here. There's a decent shot of blocking them off. I know this seems crazy, but yeah, we're going to go down to no cards in hand right now. It'll be okay. We play out of reserve plenty. We have lots of out of reserve play that we can do. Their Hathor is really hurting them here. This is one thing Lyra has to play pretty carefully with all the zeros in their deck. It uh, It's funny because Lyra is just kind of the like, roll the dice and see what happens faction. It seems like on the surface. But really, they require a lot of careful planning to play effectively. Um, because you really, really want to be watching where your tokens are going to. Ooh, big croupier. Okay. Well, unfortunately, the Keylon Burst is really good right now. Um, we're going to... We're going to go ahead and toss the Chronicler to resupply. Yeah, that's fine. And we got a sticky note seals too. Um, I'm I want to keep that for Asmodeus potential. I mean, either one can be used on 
this fella. So go ahead and just knock that right out of there. And that'll give us a really sweet turn. They don't want it. You don't want a Navinka. I'll use Krupier. Okay. But you don't, you really don't want a Navinka here. You, okay. Uh, we have Trace and Rossum active, but it actually doesn't make any sense to use now. We'll use it next turn. I mean, I guess they could have anchored. They were losing it either way. No, I did, they couldn't have anchored just fine. It didn't really matter. Um, Bye-bye Stargazer, I think. It's fine. Um, I'm going to guess I'm not going to need both Sticky Note Seals. Maybe that's wrong, because if they have his modius, I'm going to want to use it twice. But I also just want to have a body. Keelan is the only card in your hand is pretty cool, because he's quite efficient. Keelan, Keelan, Keelan. I think it's a triple Keelan turn. <laughs> uh, not good on the companion side, or the hero side, unfortunately. Only useful on the companion side. Um, yep, so that's where we're going to go. But Keelans will do a good job of progressing us and pushing over there. Sticky note with an all-in. I don't I don't know if they, they have to roll well to shut us down with something. They have to have it and then roll well. So let's just go ahead and sticky note this again. Just, just hold them off. You know, that's the thing. When your deck plays into the late game like this, as long as you can just keep holding them off, that's how you win. You just accrue value. Which is why I didn't like playing landmarks in here at all. The landmarks give up early game momentum in favor of late game momentum, but our deck is already built around late game momentum. And I just felt I, f I found that by the time the late game hit, I was just too far behind every time. Ooh, I kind of like Scrambler here for once. For once, I actually like the Scrambler. Oh, okay. Got a little Tanuki action. They got to play a cheap Tanuki, huh? Okay. Well, we'll trace and Rossum. Awesome. And armor. Armor is a great play. Armor is a wonderful play. Uh, we would need to win on forest on that side or water on this side. So Scrambler is like not actually good on either side. But we'll just go ahead and do it anyway. I don't think the options were getting any better for the Scrambler. Anytime soon. Like, not soon enough. Hitting the Tanuki is fine, too. That all-in, though, like, if I don't have the removal, which I'm all out of right now, that could totally screw me over. <laughs> so, it's fine to get rid of that. Ooh, I... I just can't progress on both sides. We have to get above four, though, because otherwise Navenka pushes this to four. Or just... <laughs> oh, no. That's rough. Sorry, Navenka account. But, I mean, I assume by your name, you, you're you ride or die with Navenka. So, that's how it'd be. All right, Keylon Elemental. Oh, but the stats are important on Keylon, actually. Uh, man, it's too bad, because Daughter is so good, but, like, having a two-drop here is the best thing. And I... I want a Haven Bouncer. I really want a Haven Bouncer, because this... Krupier is going to make it so tough to progress on either side. They have a significant amount of cards compared to us, because of all the, like, little resupplies I think they've gotten, but... We are so much farther in the race, too. It's a salvager. All right, salvager can go down there. That's fine. All right, bouncer, bouncer. Where do you go? Let's get off this water spot. Let's knock that out and get off the water spot. Have we seen a lot of rares or is this a starter deck also? Blue is rare, right? Yeah, the blue is rare. So this isn't a starter deck. They have a lot of cards that we haven't seen. We've just seen two copies of Hathor, 
Croupier, all in, Tanuki, Trickster, Cloth Dancer. I mean, they just must have a bunch of rares sitting in their deck. They might be coming now. There's rare Asmodeus. There we go. Okay. And it's anchored down. Okay. Well, if they commit a lot to that side, we can actually... Um... Nah, I don't think... I think we'll just want the stats. We just want to win on this side, this turn. Let's pop this guy out here. That four is big. That four is huge. The four will actually let us play Salvager to that side, too. Four on Mountain. Exactly. Yep, yep, that's what we want. So they can use Navenka on here, and we will still win with the Salvager play, and that'll give us a little resupply here to find a Keylon Burst. Not quite the right removal. We want Sticky Note, but Keylon's good, too. Keylon's good, too. That was risky. All right. Well, I like it. I like the risky play. They had an anchor in Asmodeus, and they risked it all, but it paid off. We have two draws and Rossum, Trace and Rossum, to try and find Sticky Note Seals. Did not find it here. It's time for Keylon to finally go. We have all three drops, and we only need to win on this side, and we are on two different biomes on that side, so it's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. I don't know. Maybe they have, uh, they could have out of faction Shenlong or something, I suppose. Um, yep, we'll just, uh, we'll just drop the bouncer. Oh, I, I should have, whoops, I should have traced and Rossum. I'll do that next time. Katagir and Mage Dancer. Gian, what are you doing here? We're pumping the stats. We're going deep. We're going to 12s. Roll the dice. I know you love it. Enjoy your die roll. But you can't quite get to the 12s. Good game, Navenka account. I hope you had fun. Though. I hope you enjoyed rolling your dice. <laughs> Good games. All right, everyone. Well, that is the Trace and Rossum deck. Again, it just it it needs a little more of an expanded card pool. It's tough using Sierra and Oddball's cards, but I hope you see some of how this deck will work when we get the full card pool and we really get to dig in and, and really take advantage of these like resupply synergies, uh, playing things from reserve, support abilities. It's a very fun deck to play once it gets rolling. It has a lot of, it has a, a, an ability to see a lot of different cards in your deck, uh, which is also really good to get your like unique cards out there when we have that too. So a lot of fun to play. Really have enjoyed this one. Uh, we will back be, be back next week with another gameplay video for you guys. Um, if you're catching this as this releases, the Kickstarter is ending. So the last chance to get on the altered Kickstarter before we get into the wait before the release of the game in August of this year. So really, really excited about that. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.